Kids Week, where we're learning about how Jesus' power pulls us through. Today, we're going to learn about how Jesus' power helps us live forever. Today, I found out that our friend Cam and his train were able to make it up and over the mountain and make all their deliveries. And that's great, but we probably won't see him for a little while because he'll be gone and he probably won't be Whoa. back. And oh! oh Cam! I'm here! Oh! I made it! Oh, Cam, what happened? Oh. I, I, I didn't know that traveling on a train was this tiring. Well, everything was going great. We made it up and over the mountain, and we delivered all the M&Ms. People were so happy. And then I was in such a good mood on the way back, I thought, I know, let's try and get home even faster. Aw, did you miss us? Of course. And so I thought, well, how are we going to do this? Well, if we want the train to go faster, we're going to need to heat the engine up. So we're going to need more steam in the engine. So we're going to need more coal in the furnace. Right. Okay. So then 
I started shoveling coal in the furnace, and it started to go faster. And I thought, well, I'll put some more coal in the furnace. And I shoveled some more, and I shoveled some more, and it started to go faster. Uh -huh. And then you know what I thought? What? If I put more coal in, it'll go even faster. So I shoveled more coal in, and more coal in, and more coal in, and you know what happened? You got here super fast? We ran out of coal. Oh, that's frustrating. Yeah, so the train ran out of coal a few miles back, oh. and the rest of the crew stayed with the train, and I hiked all the way up here to try and come and get some help. Oh, I see. Well, you know, Cam, endings are a part of life. Coal runs out, trains stop, parties end, people graduate from school, grown-ups retire. Ending is just a part of life. Wow. Not the most inspiring thing you've ever told me. Well, actually, today, my friends and I are learning about how Jesus' power lets you live forever. Thanks to Jesus, life can continue on forever. It'll never end or run out. Wow! That is the most inspiring thing you've ever told me. Yes, I just needed to end my story. I've never known anyone that's lived forever. Well, it sounds like you need to learn more about Jesus. Why don't you come on back after you help the train and, you know, my friends and I, we can tell you more about Jesus. He is our forever friend. Well, let me go find a train that can help my friends, and then I'll come back, and when I do, I want to hear everything. All right. Well, I'll be waiting forever. All right. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Good luck, Cam. Well, everyone, I hope you have a great rest of your day learning how Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. We'll see you back here later. Bye. Adventures. My name is Julissa and today I will be telling you about Jesus' death and resurrection. Today's lesson comes from the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It reads, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Today's totally true Bible story is one that I love because it completely changed my life and I can't wait to share it with you. That's because you're my friends, but you're not just my friends, you're God's friends. God carefully and wonderfully crafted and created each one of you. 
The Bible says that God gave you bodies, bones, brains, and blood. God made you in his very own image. God made you with love to be with him forever. This is God's best perfect plan, a close friendship connected with his creations. But unfortunately, it didn't stay that way. Humans, just like you and me, believed a big lie. God's enemy, Satan, told people that they didn't need God. He said, you can be like God. And we still sometimes believe that lie today. You can be good enough, or you can do enough good things. You're good enough on your own. We sometimes believe that we can earn and achieve and do good enough to make God love us and be his friend. But that lie separates us from God. Sin, wrong choices that we make, tears us apart from God. It rips our friendship with him. It makes a mess. And this isn't what God wants. So God gave up something precious to fix our big problem. God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live on earth. And let me tell you a little bit about Jesus, because he's someone that I love very much. Maybe you've heard about Jesus, too. Can you think of one thing that you know about Jesus? Well, the Bible, God's word, tells us that Jesus lived on earth a long, long time ago. If Jesus had a trophy or a medal, it could be for showing God's love to people no one else seemed to notice. He'd get first place in healing people. Or a blue ribbon for miraculously feeding crowds of hungry people. Jesus did things that only God could do. He walked on water, he calmed storms, and raised people from the dead. The Bible is filled with true stories of the powerful things Jesus did. He could do those things because he's God's very own son with God's own power. This week, you've learned a song about the best, most wonderful, and most powerful thing Jesus ever did. In fact, the most powerful thing in history of the world. And Jesus did it. And he did it for every one of you. The first two lines of the song, The Old Rugged Cross, tells us, On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. You see, not everyone believed that Jesus was God's son. Some people thought he was a liar. They got so angry that they arrested Jesus. They hurt him and forced him to carry a rough wooden cross to a hill called Golgotha. There, they nailed his hands and feet to a cross and left him to die. In that time, only criminals were put to death on a cross, but Jesus had never sinned. He was God's pure and perfect son. The song tells us the cross is an emblem, a picture of suffering and shame. Jesus suffered for our shame. We may feel ashamed of the wrong things we do, the bad choices we make. Even though we do a lot of great things, we all have sin. But the next part of the song tells us, and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Slain means that someone was killed. Jesus was the dearest and best. First Peter chapter two, verse 22 says, he never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. When we do something wrong, there's usually a punishment or a consequence. When we sin, the ultimate consequence is separation from God, forever. Imagine being separated from God's love, forgiveness, goodness, power, and joy forever. Why don't you whisper one word to yourself that describes what that would be like? Even though Jesus never sinned, he willingly died for you. He loves you so much that he took the punishment for your wrongdoings. It was the only way to heal our friendship with God. Jesus took your punishment. The next lines of the songs go like this. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. The word cherish means to value or treasure something. Sometimes we value or treasure or cherish our accomplishments. I'm sure many of you have won trophies or awards for things that you've worked hard for. Maybe it was soccer, sports, music, or school. If you're watching Kids Week with your friends or a family member, why don't you turn to them and share what your favorite award that you've ever won. Well, Salvation is something that we can never earn or work hard enough to get. Only Jesus can give us this salvation. Sometimes we value or treasure or cherish our accomplishments. 
You know, all those awards and things, like this medal right here, it's okay to be proud of them. But a thousand ribbons or awards or good deeds can't wash away our wrongs. We can never do enough good things to earn heaven. The Bible says it this way in Ephesians 2, 8. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. We're powerless to save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. So lay down your treasures and rewards at the foot of the cross as a way to show that he is most important. The Bible promises this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16. Jesus' power lets us live forever. And because of Jesus, we can cling to the cross, the promise of hope, love, and power it represents. The last line says that we'll exchange our trophies for a crown. The Bible describes heaven as streets of gold and walls made of gems. This place Jesus is making for us is more beautiful than we can imagine. There are no more tears or sadness, and God's peace and glory are everywhere. Wow, that's something to claim to. So, I encourage you to sing this old rugged cross as a prayer of thanks to Jesus. If you know the motions, go ahead and do them. Thank you.
Hi, welcome back to Construction Junction. Today we've been talking about how Jesus' power lets us live forever. And we're going to be designing a toy that sort of has a never-ending loop in it that you can play with over and over again to help us remember that Bible point. So what you're going to need to get out of your kit today are these eight cork self-adhesive boards and then three ribbons. You should have two black and one white. We're going to start um, by thinking about each of these boards as a number. So I'll say take number one, take number two, um, and that'll help us just keep track of where, the, where we are in all of the steps. And if something becomes a little bit confusing or you're not sure what I mean, just pause the video and go back and rewatch it because the steps um, might be a little bit confusing um, the first time you watch it through. Now, um, like I said, you're going to take board number one and put it down in the middle right in front of you. And you're going to want to think about your black ribbons as always being on the top and on the bottom of your board and your white ribbon as always being in the middle. So just to set it up, we're going to put the black ribbons facing to the left and the white ribbon facing to the right. And so this is what it's going to look like once we take the self-adhesive part back off. These um, are pretty sticky, so sometimes if you don't have the ribbon exactly how you want it, you can readjust it a little bit, but for the most part, you're going to want to be very careful when you're putting them down to get it just kind of pretty close to how you want it. So the black ribbon, like I said, you're going to take um, an inch or two of it and go about, you know, half an inch from the top and uh, stick it on and then do sort of the opposite on the bottom, about half an inch from the bottom. And again, those are facing to the left. And then you're going to take the right one, the white one on the right, and put it right in the middle, just like that. Then you're going to take board number two, and you can take the backing off of that right away. And we're going to go ahead and just put that right on top. Okay. Next, we're going to flip it over so that the black ribbons are now facing to the right and the white ribbon is facing to the left. And you want to straighten it out, make sure you've got it just how you want it. And you're going to pick up board number three. Board number three, before you take the adhesive back off, we're just going to uh, plan it out. It's going to wind up going pretty close to the first set, to boards one and two. And it's going to go on top of the black ribbons. And the white ribbon is going to come back over and go on top of it. So I'm going to take the backing off now. And I have it kind of where I want it. You don't, you want to leave a very little bit of room in between boards one and two and board three. And then very carefully, the white ribbon is going to stretch across board two onto board three and you're going to stick it down onto board three right in the middle there. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do kind of a funny thing. We're going to pull the black ribbons so that they're kind of going up and down and then we're going to take them through that little crack and put them on top of board number two. So at this point they're not touching board number three at all. And we're going to kind of, now we, we're back to having the black ribbons facing to the left and the white ribbon facing to the right. At this point, you're going to take board number four, but you might think you're going to put it down on top of board number three. We're not going to do that quite yet. It's going to actually go back on board number two with the non-sticky side touching board number two. So it's going to wind up going like that. And so what we're going to do is make sure that the black ribbons are fairly taut. Um, you don't want them to be very loose. You can take the backing off of board number four now. And we'll lay that down there. So nothing's on the sticky side yet. Now we're going to take the top black ribbon and pull it across so that it's only on board number four. Be careful not to get it on board number three, which is still over here with the white ribbon on it. And we'll do the same with the bottom black ribbon. 
so that it is stretching across board number four. And again, we're going to pull it through the crack between boards three and four so that it goes under and it's not sticking to board number three. This is probably the most tricky maneuver in the whole thing. So now all my ribbons are facing to the right and I can kind of close the sandwich now. I can take board number four and close it on top of board number three. We are now halfway done. <laughs> and we have all of our ribbons facing to the right and we have boards one and two and three and four all settled. Before we move on to boards five and six, take your black ribbons and have them facing to the left. So now only the white ribbon is facing to the right. At this point, you're gonna put board number five down on top of the white ribbon so that it's not sticking to it. And again, you're gonna leave just a teeny bit of space in between the boards. And then you can fold the black ribbons back over so that they do stick on to board number five. You remember you want to keep a sort of a straight line going there. And now at this point, you're actually going to take the white ribbon and pull it so that it's now facing to the left. So again, it's also glued. All three ribbons are going to be sticking to board number five, but going in opposite directions. So the black ribbons are now facing to the right, and the white ribbon is now facing to the left. Then you're just going to grab board number six and glue it down right on top of there. This one's an easy one. As we prepare for our last two boards, we're going to pull the black ribbons so that they're now facing to the left. And all three ribbons are facing to the left. We're going to put board number seven down, and then the white ribbon is going to cross board number six without sticking to it, and it is going to stick to board number seven. And then we're going to take board number eight, and this is the tricky part. We're not going to lay it down on board number seven. We're going to lay it down on board number six, but with the non-sticky part touching board number six. And the black ribbons are then going to be folded so that they are touching and sticking to board number eight, but not board number seven. So they're going to get put under board number seven without sticking to it. And again, we're going to go with the bottom ribbon so that it is sticking to board number eight and weave it through the hole, the gap between seven and eight. So now all three ribbons are facing to the right and you're just gonna kinda pull them tight without letting your fingers get stuck to it. <laughs> and then you're gonna close the sandwich. As close as you can. So now you can see it sort of has a railroad pattern, right? So we've got white, black, white, black, on this side. So at this point you have a little bit of ribbon left on the ends, so you're going to want to grab some scissors and just trim that off. So the, the white ribbon you can trim off just right there, right next to the final boards that we put on. The black ribbon should be poking out a little bit more. If you flip this back last panel up, you can trim those right there. So you do have a little bit of ribbon left over. And now, if you think about this toy that you have now built. It's called a Jacob's Ladder and you can kind of fold it and store it easily like this. And um, the way that you can play with it is you lift it up into the air and if you tilt the top, it kind of self-perpetuatingly flips down. And if you turn it around and tilt it again. Oh, I've always been fascinated with these to try to figure out the way they work. 
And you can kind of just, in a never-ending loop, it never, it's never finished, right? It keeps always turning and twisting. And that's really what the point of today was, right? That Jesus' love and power helps us to live forever. Just like this toy, you can just keep flipping it over and over and over. Thanks for joining me. I'm Isaac and I'm 11 years old. Uh, at home I like to, well a lot of times I play video games. <laughs> I have two brothers, one's older than me, he's in into acting and singing. My younger brother Elijah, he's seven. My sister's name is Zoe, but she, like a normal four-year-old toddler, will make messes all the time, paint on the walls. Isaac also dances. Uh, I started dancing, I think like two years ago. My favorite kind of dance is contemporary or lyrical. It's sort of like ballet, but it's a little more free. I always felt like when I was dancing, I wasn't really stressed about anything or worried. Sort of forget about anything else that is bothering you. Isaac had another brother named Joel. Joel was two years younger than I am. He was always really happy and joyful. When he was one, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Cancer is a disease that most kids do not have or get. He had to do some crazy thing to get rid of it, and it was gone for a year. But then it came back, and they said he only had a few months to live, but then he lived five more years. Sadly, Isaac's little brother, Joel, died. One of the things I remember a lot about him is he always had that, like, little giggle. <laughs> he, he always loved knocking cup towers down. So he'd make one that was, like, maybe double the size of him, and he'd run into it, and it would come down, and he'd laugh so hard. A lot of times we'd take him to this farm. It was like a petting zoo in some places and you could feed the animals. I have this one mem memory of Joel. He, he was feeding the goats. So we give him the bag to reach in and <laughs> give to the goats. But then he just gives the bag to the goats and the goat devours oh. the whole thing. <laughs> Joel always loved animals. One time he got a ride a pony and he was so happy. He loved it. Isaac misses his brother Joel. Joel loved Jesus and believed in him too. Um, a lot of times I feel sort of like I miss him and pretty sad, but I'm glad that he's in heaven and he can do so many things that I can't even do right now. <laughs> Dancing always like cheers me up because I sort of, it makes me think about God and how he's with Joel and he is amazing. <laughs> Isaac knows that because of Jesus, he will be able to see his brother again in heaven. I sort of look forward to hearing his giggle and I look forward to running up to him and giving him a grand old hug. <laughs> In the Bible, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11 says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I feel like that verse makes me feel like sort of hopeful that we can share the power of God and the Holy Spirit with the whole world and that one day we can all know Jesus and God and praise and worship together, even if we die, we still get to live forever in heaven with God and Jesus' power is letting you live forever. Jesus' power lets us live forever.
Hope you had a great day, everybody, learning about how Jesus' power lets us live forever. Trust Jesus. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye.